Hi everyone, this is part four of Support Vector Machines Classifier, and today we cover kernels. And in this particular video, we are going to be talking about kernels, the logic of integrating kernels, what kernel trick is, and the overall logic having included them into our algorithm. But before that, let's first step back and take a look at what we so far have covered and what you have basically covered is a soft margin SVM, a hard margin SVM, both the primal and the dual formulation is what we have seen in the earlier parts. Okay, And then today, we are first going to define what is a kernel. So in the context of this video, a kernel is a mathematical function that does transformation. Okay. Typically, it is a nonlinear transformation. All right. So, why do we need kernels? So, first question is why kernels are important to us. So, for this, we have to go back to some of the theorems and also some empirical observation, where we can conclude that many problems, which are not linearly separable, they become linearly separable after a nonlinear transformation. So, this is a very important note that we have to understand, okay? Now, one example for this is an XR problem where in a two-dimensional space, it is not linearly separable. However, in a three-dimensional space, it is separable, okay? Typical transformations also are transformations that will take you to a higher dimension. So that is something for us to understand is that before transformation, we do have a particular function which is not linearly separable however post transformation we have the same data points that now have been linearly separated okay so that's an important thing to note now along that note the scheme what we're going to apply is first for the input data point xi we are going to be transforming them but sending it through uh, a phi function a phi of xi so therefore the overall training set becomes d is equal to phi of xi yi for values of i from 1 to n. Okay, that's going to become our training set. Let's look at an example. Let's say we have two features, x and y, and we want to calculate a transformation function for degree 2 polynomial. Then in such a case, the number of features that we will get is x, y, x square, y square, and x, y. At a minimum, we could also potentially have x square, y square in, in, in this particular case. In case of degree 3, at a minimum, we are going to have not only x and y, but also we are going to have x square, y square, x, y, x cube, y cube, x square, y, y square, y, x, y square, so and so, so and so. There are, there are a lot more terms we can have. So what it means is, for k features which have been input into the system, when we want to compute the higher dimensional transformation, which is what we are discussing here as an example, is we are looking at a complexity of k plus d plus 1, the whole factorial by k factorial. That's the complexity of the function we are looking at. That's the number of features we will actually end up having. And this feature list is actually going to be growing exponential to d which is the dimension, which is the degree with which we are uh, currently expanding. Okay, So that's the key note for us to understand. And what we have to know is that now that we know that if we were to take data to a higher dimension, and having taken the data to a higher dimension, how do we now apply it into our existing support vector machine uh, mathematical space? Okay, So that's where the concept of kernel tricks come in. So one thing to note is that we spent time understanding the dual formulation in the earlier lectures because the kernel trick actually operates only on the dual formulation and not on the primal formulation. Okay, So that's an important thing to know. Next important thing to know is after we have done a transformation of this kernel with the kernel function for our standard dual formulation, which is given in the left-hand side. So if you see the dual formulation here, it is the dual formulation that we had earlier derived for our uh, SVM. So minimization of half, sigma, sum of alpha i 
alpha j y i y j x transpose i x j minus the sum of alpha i and they were constrained to zero and the alpha i's were constrained between zero and c and this is the soft margin svm dual formulation okay that we had derived now when we do a change mathematical notation change what we're doing is we're directly embedding the kernel transformation in place of xi transpose xj we are putting it phi of xi transpose into phi of xj okay that's the first thing we're doing and one very neat thing that this that gets called as a kernel trick is that when we do a computation for example a kernel function k xi xj which is nothing but in this current case is phi of xi transpose xj we can do a direct computation of this value and that direct computation is cheaper than computing separately a kernel value of phi of xi and separate value for phi of xj and then taking a dot product okay so this particular notion that we can directly compute this value instead of separately computing them and taking a dot product saves us the computational complexity and it gets called as the kernel trick okay so now let's look at what sort of a training logic overall training logic then becomes so first things what ha what gets to happen is we are given a training data set d with x1 to xn in data and now we compute the kernel matrix so kernel matrix is kij which is computed as the kernel function of xi xj okay for this given data set next what we're going to do is we're going to compute the optimal alpha which is nothing but a gradient descent or a related optimization algorithm that we will apply onto this minimization function for us to get our optimal alpha and note here we have replaced it with kij and not xi xj okay so from this particular optimization perspective it is running directly on the kernel functions next we compute the b having computed the alphas we have enough information for us to be able to compute b to be yi minus w transpose x for each value of i which is currently bound between 0 and c because the alpha values are bound between this okay now if a new value comes in in particular case let's say this is how far we'll do till the training data is concerned but post this in the test when the test data is passed over which is what we are writing as for a new point that's coming in we compute w transpose x which is the new point its value as is equal to the sum of i1 to n alpha i y i for the kernel value where we are passing in xi comma x which is our new training data set point okay so that's what we do now that's the overall training logic now let's look at a very quick example of how computational complexity is reduced remember earlier we saw for a k featured data set with d degrees of uh, uh, degrees of computation we were growing exponential in d but now we are actually going to be growing our computational complexity is in the order of k plus log d so we are now growing in the space of log d and not exponential d which is a significant computational complexity reduction because of this kernel trick okay so that's all for this video i hope you guys enjoyed it the subsequent videos i'll cover the kernel types and also we'll discuss how to build new kernels and what defines mathematically as a kernel. In the current video, we simplify the definition of a kernel as any transformation function. However, in the subsequent videos, we will mathematically put the necessary framework around what defines a kernel. Okay. All right. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you.